Hello, hello, this is Roberto and this is the HVAC is my channel. Today we're going to be talking about fenestration for windows and doors for heat load calculations. All right. All right. So let's get into it. So to begin with, we're going to start with the term fenestration. So what is fenestration? So this is a very interesting topic because <clears throat> whenever you're discussing some technical concepts about heat load calculations, you're always going to be seeing this, uh, this word fenestration. So for fenestration, what we're going to say is that this is basically the openings that, did in, that are in a building. So we're going to put these openings, okay, openings in a building, in a building, okay, in a building. So when we're saying openings in a building, this refers also to residential houses. You can have single homes, town homes, you can have multifamily Play, uh, places you can have buildings so it's a in general it's a general term so when we're saying about openings what openings do we have in a building so for the openings we're talking about windows okay windows we can have doors okay doors skylights skylights okay skylights and the reason fenestration is very important is because actually when when we're, when you're doing a heat load calculation the windows bring a big heat load in the building because there is a lot of solar heat gain in this case. So that's why when we're talking about fenestration, you talk mainly talk about windows and then extra you talk about doors and skylights. All right. So, so if we're talking about windows, we're going to have the following in here. So as you can see on the on the right so if we have a window for example let's put this window right here see okay window okay this is going to be say three by four or five say three by six three by seven three by five six okay three by six say that all right so when you have a three by six for example you're always going to have a label a label on the window okay so that label has to be NFRC rated. So we're going to put that in red. So this label is going to be NFRC rated. So what do I mean? What is NFRC? So actually NFRC is going to be the national, okay, national and fenestration. Okay, now we know what is fenestration, right? Fenestration, openings on buildings, but related to heat load, fenestration. So actually we're going to do this. <clears throat> Fenestration. All right. Yeah, this was not the right word. Fenestration. Okay. National Fenestration Rating Council. Okay. Rating Council. Council. Okay. So basically, this entity is a non governmental entity that rates the energy performance of your window. So this label are going to be present in your window. And the most important part of this is going to be the u factor and the u value so we're going to put in here u factor okay u factor okay the u factor is going to be in this case equals to 0 0.30 and the solar heat gain coefficient solar heat gain coefficient is going to be equal to 0 0.29 visible transmittance is good but not very much kind of important or relevant but we are still going to put it there the most important data that we need for heat load calculations are these two. The U factor, which is 0 0.30. In this case, we see the label of the window is right here. That label is based on the NFRC and the solar heat gain coefficient of 0.29, which is again in the label. Now, what we have on the left, on the right, I mean, is that the u factor is more related to winter because what is the u factor and we're gonna put this in pink since this is very important so uh, the u factor in a window actually is a measure of heat loss let's put a measure me measure of heat loss okay so technically, when you are having this window, this window is telling you how much heat can you contain inside the building because outside is very cold. So how 
how much heat can you keep inside or prevent of escaping the building? So that's the U factor, measure of heat loss. And then conversely, you have the solar heat going coefficient as a measure, okay, of heat gain, okay, of heat gain. So in this case, if it's a measure of heat gain, you are saying that how much you are, how much heat you are prevented preventing to enter the building, all right? So you don't want heat to enter the building, you're preventing that. So that's why the solar heat gain coefficient is more for summer and then the U factor is more for winter. And the visible transmittance is actually how much natural light is going to enter the building. So measure, oh, we're gonna put in here, measure of natural light, natural light, okay? And this is also very important because if you have natural light, then you're not going to be using your lights inside the home and then you're going to have more energy savings. So that's why it's an extra addition to this label. But the most important part for our heat load calculations are the U factor and the solar heat gain coefficient. All right, so let's make a very quick example so that way we understand this a little bit better. So for heat load calculation, for example, we're gonna have in here for heating, okay? Let's talk about winter. So if in winter, okay, we need our outdoor conditions. So let's put this in here. I have my window, all right? I have my window. So outside is gonna be my temperature one and inside is gonna be my temperature two. And we're gonna say that the temperature, the outside temperature, this is outside, okay, outside. And this is inside, okay, inside, all right? So for the outside, depending on the location, we need to know our design temperature, okay? So for example, if we're living in, say, Washington, D.C., let's put that in here. Uh, let's put that in red or in white, okay? So in Washington, D.C., okay, let's put in D.C., depending on the location, okay? Your outdoor design temperature for winter is going to be 17 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? For winter, there you go, 17 degrees Fahrenheit in DC, Washington, DC. And now the indoor design temperature in winter, usually it is 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 30 percent relative humidity that's the indoor design temperature and this this is for winter so let's put that in here actually so outside depending on the location the indoor let's put the indoor design temperature design temperature okay temperature is the following it's going to be 70 degrees fahrenheit and 30 percent relative humidity Okay, so who says that? Rem uh, Remberto is not inventing that. This is actually based on ASRAE fundamentals. ASRAE, ASRAE fundamentals. ASRAE fundamentals. Fundamentals. Okay. And this is the comfort zone. Comfort zone in winter. In winter. All right. And the same thing in summer, you're going to have instead of 75, you're going to have and instead of 70, you're going to have 75. So, you know what? Let's do this in winter and in, in also in, you know, in summer, you're going to have 75 degrees. All right. 50% relative humidity. All right. This is going to be in summer. Summer. So in other words, you're going to have the indoor design temperature for winter and you have it for summer. Okay, so this is for winter and summer. And then the outside design temperature depends on the location. So this is depending on the location. All right, there you go. So now in order to make our heat load calculation, what we're gonna do is the following. Um, let's do this with this. So Q is gonna be equal to, as usual, U times A times T, the temperature difference. However, what we have in other videos is that we can change this position, area times U times TD, okay? And if you remember in other videos, U factor times TD is my heat transfer multiplier, okay? So for heat transfer multiplier, we have two options. We have a heat transfer multiplier for cooling, okay? 
or for heating. Okay, so the heat transfer multiplying for heating is a little bit more complicated, eh, but we can do it. But we, you can go to the table. Table. Um, the table is actually in manual J, and it's actually the table 3A or 3B. Table 3A, 3B of manual J from ACA. Okay, manual J. Or you can always resort to, it's better to resort to write soft. Write soft. I'm not making any commercial for them any yet. Or load calc, load calc. Elite, you know, different heat load calculation softwares. Now for heating, the calculation of heat transfer multiplier is very easy. It's, it's very easy. You just need to use factor and the uh, temperature difference. So let's do that. So we're going to do the heat transfer, heat transfer multiplier for heating. So heat transfer multiplier for heating is going to be equal to the area. See? Uh, not really uh, the area, so it's going to be actually the u factor, so u factor, u factor times td, right? Times td. So in this case, the heat transfer multiplier for heating is going to be the u factor. What's the u factor in this case? 0 0.3. 0 0.3 times td. What's the td? Is the outdoor design temperature and the indoor design temperature? In this case, it's going to be 70 minus 17. But wait a minute, why is not 17 minus 70? It's the same, only the sign is going to change, right? So in this case, the heat transfer multiplier is going to be equal to the following. So let's do the math in here, and that's going to be, what is it? Okay, 0 0.3 times, we have the 17 minus 17, and then that's going to be 15.9. That's going to be 15.9. And then if we have this already, now we're going to be able to calculate the heat loss of our window. What is the area of our window? If you can see in here, the area is going to be 6 times 3 equals 18, 18 square feet, right? So that's going to be 18 square feet times my heat transfer multiplier. Therefore, my heat loss in this case is going to be 18 times 15.9. And that's going to be equal to the following. Okay. 286.2. 286.2 BTUs per hour. Okay. So we're going to put this in a box right here. Like this. Let's put that in a box right here. Heat transfer multiplied. Okay. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did hit the like button and subscribe. And in our next video, we're going to be talking about albedo. So that's going to be the next video. What is albedo? Albedo, I'm going to put it as a raw B, raw G, because albedo is actually the ground reflectance reflectance of the ground, which really affects the fenestration load. And as, as you remember, and, and th th this depends on the surface, surface. For example, if on the surface you have grass, for example, or you have snow, or you have like a black body. So the, the surface is going to absorb all of it. There's no reflectance. So that's albedo is going to be zero for the snow. It's going to reflect all of it. It's going to be a high albedo. And if for the grass, it's going to be 0 0.2. This completely affects the, our heat load calculation. All right. So thank you very much. And I hope to see you in the next video.